You may or may not have known you were going to struggle with infertility. Some people have that knowledge ahead of time and some don't. But once you know it's going to be a part of your journey, it can be really important to make some sort of a plan for how to cope with that struggle. But <laughs> headed into that, advice about infertility can be absolutely exhausting because most people are going into that advice with topics of advice like how to get pregnant, advice on what you're doing wrong, advice on how to increase your chances, and a lot of those things you probably already know, or you can Google. But I'm gonna go into this from a little bit of a different perspective. I'm gonna come into it with an idea of how to cope with the process of infertility and how to survive within yourself and within your marriage throughout the process of infertility. The first step of beginning that process of like knowing I have infertility and I've gotta somehow survive this within me and within my marriage is to set boundaries and limits for yourself and as a couple. How much pain and medical testing do I want to endure in this process emotionally and physically? How much financial room do we have to kind of make this work, right, for each or as a couple? Um, Infertility can feel like such a manifestation of lack of control. And I talk about that a little bit more in depth in the article. Um, but setting limits on how long you want this to go on. Setting limits can increase your feelings of control in a process that tells you how out of control you truly are. Um, setting up a game plan as a couple opens up communication around a topic that can show you where communication issues in your marriage really become more apparent. Um, a third area to sort of begin to try to create a game or um, to try to survive infertility is to seek balance in your marriage, to find a balance together of hope and contentment. Hope can be beautiful, but absolutely devastating in the process of infertility. Um, so finding a balance between that hope and then finding out what is, what is the joyous part of your marriage and how do you survive if you don't get what you ultimately want, which is a baby. So one thing, one way to survive infertility is to keep your marriage and your identity within your marriage intact. You're not the woman who can't get pregnant. You're not the man who can't get his wife pregnant. You are the same person you've always been. Those pieces of your identity do not comprise who you are. Who you are has not changed. It's not some failure on your part. It's an issue of biology and not something you can control. Another piece of this is to use relaxation to help you cope and to find calm spaces to get grounded and to find peace. Another aspect is to spend time in prayer. Um, the disappointment <laughs> comes monthly in infertility or it comes even more frequently. Um, and so it's important to find calm spaces daily where you can get centered in finding your identity. Um, another thing as a couple is to find infertility free spaces where infertility isn't brought up, where you're not talking about it constantly, where you go and remind yourselves as a couple, who are you? Where you're not the infertile couple, where you're the couple who is as you have always been, <laughs> so and so and so and so, man and wife, who are you? Finding back to who you were from the beginning who are you? Trying to focus on keeping negative thoughts at bay is a great way to um, find some positivity in the infertility journey. Now, this isn't an easy one. It's a frustrating one for me to even bring up because I know it causes a lot of uh, 
um, frustration for people and I know that it can be really frustrating to even <laughs> talk about for a lot of people or to hear but it there is a lot of um, long-term benefits there are a lot of long-term benefits in thinking about positive things um, so one thing to think about is to remind yourself about the things you do have to be thankful for and about the positive things in your life and that can help with that contentment piece in your marriage and in remembering who you are and where your identity is found in Christ and in your marriage and in yourself. Um, and then another piece of infertility can be finding a Christian counselor who can help you remain grounded in yourself and in your marriage through that infertility journey. Infertility can cause a lot of issues within your marriage and in yourself as you struggle with feelings that can feel a lot of times like failure and very vulnerable. It is a vulnerable journey. So it's sometimes good to find places where you can go feel that vulnerability, whether it be with friends or whether it be with a counselor. It's important to find safe spaces where you can go feel. Um, so some of the things, um, well, these things will be covered a little more in depth in my article. And so I, um, would appreciate it if you'd check that out a little bit further, but thanks for watching.